Number five on this list is the Chateau de Camargue. The Chateau de Camargue is located in Perigord, an ancient region of France. The chateau isn't as beautiful as it once was, some of its former glory lost to time and also to war. This chateau was a critical point of interest in the 100 years war between France and Britain. It was the host to one of the more brutal fights that the war ever saw and was eventually captured by the British. As was typical back then, when you captured a place, many of the people that were running that place were either captured or put to death. One person of interest was put to death by being beheaded and that was the young lover of the daughter of the Earl of Camargue. It said that this man was deeply in love with the daughter and that she was in love with him as well. His beheading didn't seem like a major point of interest to the British at the time, but it actually left a bit of a spirit behind. What's really interesting about this story though is that it wasn't the spirit of this young man that was left behind. It also wasn't the spirit of the young daughter or even the Earl of Camarque himself. In fact, it was the spirit of this young man's horse. The horse that this young man rode into battle with to attempt to defend the chateau and the horse that he had his whole life. Its ghost has yet to pass on. It's said that the ghost of this horse wanders the grounds of the chateau searching for its master. People who have ventured into the castle have reported hearing the clicking of hooves and a deep groan from a horse. People have also reported seeing this dead horse's ghost walking around the grounds of the chateau as if it was defending it from potential invaders like it did in the past. It's suggested that if you do intend to visit this chateau, that you don't bring any negative energy with you. The horse could potentially interpret this as a threat and come after you. Some have even suggested bringing a carrot or an apple and leaving it at the front of the chateau as a sign of good faith towards this ghostly steed. Number four on this list is the Palace de Toulouse. The Palace de Toulouse is home to one of France's most known ghosts who has been nicknamed the Red Man. The Red Man has been around for several hundred years and has two potential stories of origin. The first story talks about a man nicknamed Jack the Skinner worked for Catherine de Medici after her husband Henry II died. He worked as a hitman for her and would be sent to murder potential political foes. He was he was exceptional at his work, but eventually there grew a time where the Queen was worried that he knew too much about her. After all, he knew exactly how many people she had had executed considering he had done the executing. To make sure her secrets were safe, she had another man murder him. He killed him in the garden, which I should note is typically the area linked to this haunting, and then he left his body in said garden. When he came back to fetch the corpse, it was missing. Then, the Queen's astrologist told her that he foretold some great disaster happening to the people of Tuileries and that John would be at the forefront of it. Since then, whenever the Red Man appears, it's said that a tragic event will happen to the people surrounding his appearance. The second origin story is that when this palace was built, the Red Man was already there. This ghost spoke to Catherine de Medici and foretold her death, and even though she forsook him and the palace that she had built, the prediction he had made turned out to eventually be true. Pierre-Jean de Beringer, a famous French poet, describes the Red Man as being a small man clothed from top to toe in scarlet, whose eye is so piercing and unearthly that it terrifies the most courageous. He never speaks, nor air his visits of much length. He vanishes soon after his presence is discovered. This has been echoed throughout time as many French nobles have received visits from the Red Man before. Henry IV, Louis XVI, Mary Antoinette have all had visits from him in the past. There's even a story talking about how the Red Man appeared in front of Napoleon right before his death. There are tons of beautiful palaces in France, and if it was me, I'd avoid this one and go to one of them. Better to be safe than sorry when we're dealing with a devil-like demon whose presence means impending doom. Number three on this list is the Sonian Forest. The Sonian Forest has a very strange phenomenon that occurs in it which is locals believing it's haunted. Culture Trip says, Diogen is a strange fog that hovers in the Sonian Forest near Brussels. The fog has been described as greenish but is also grey, orange or white. What's consistent in the descriptions are small shadowy figures in the fog and the sound of laughing children. The name Diogen is a misspelling from the original 
original name Diogen, which literally translates to the eyes. It's called the eyes because there's always something large in the fog that stares at you. There have been reports of the figures near the forest that dart in front of cars and a bloody little handprint on the car window that leaves as soon as the fog is gone. A bloody little handprint. That is a big no thank you from me guys. This sounds like something that has come directly out of a horror film and something that should be avoided at all costs. Nobody knows why this fog appears, but the general consensus is that some very powerful ghostly entity conjures it. Who this entity or entities is or why they reside in this forest is unknown, just that they're extremely powerful. Locals are also very scared of this spot and it's become infamous for disappearances throughout the years. Unless you want to disappear in a greenish smoke, I'd avoid it at all costs. Number two on this list is the John McRae Bunker. Ye Praise is a city full of history. You could almost say it's haunted by history. Step into the quiet Essex Farm Cemetery by the canal to uncover a ghostly sight. The bunker is supposedly haunted by poet and physician John McRae. Many ghost hunters who come here claim to hear echoes of voices, gunshots from World War One, or even witness the ghost of John McRae and his friend Alex. The bunker is a memorial site in honor of John McRae's memory. He wrote the famous poem in Flanders Fields for friend and fellow soldier Alex Hemmler. Hemmler died on the battlefield and McRae followed not long after passing away from pneumonia. Some say that after hearing gunshots, you'll see flashes of Hemmler's ghost. Many European countries have at least one site that is haunted by the ghosts of soldiers, usually from World War I or World War II, and this bunker is Belgium's. It just so happens to be a very famous soldier though. Growing up in Canada and being Canadian, I've read and heard the poem in Flanders Fields many times. It honestly makes me really sad to hear this legend and know that John McRae's soul has yet to find peace and still clings to earth in what I can only imagine is a horrible purgatory state. If you do ever go to this place, then make sure to show some respect to him, his friend Alex, and all the other soldiers who lost their lives here. Maybe that's what his soul needs to finally pass on. And finally, number one on this list is the Crypts of Laken. These crypts are very close to the Royal Crypts of Belgium, but have been dubbed far creepier and far more haunted. Crypts are usually pretty creepy to begin with. One of the most haunted spots in the world is the Paris Catacombs after all. These get especially riddled with ghosts though after they've been abandoned for a long period of time. And that's exactly what went down at the Crypts of Laken. For 30 years, these crypts were completely forgotten about and abandoned, and those that were kept here just rotted away underground. 30 years later, a cemetery was built over top of this place and people started coming back. When they went down there again though, it wasn't how they remembered it. Creatures, dark beasts with red glowing eyes and an appetite for apparently only flesh live down there now. These underground crypts that stretch super far used to be only the home to the dead, but now they're also the home to these demon things. I personally see no appeal to going down to an ancient abandoned underground crypt anyways, but throw on some werewolf wannabes and this is definitely a spot that I'd avoid. Coming in at number five, we have Frankenstein Castle. The Frankenstein Castle is a hilltop castle that sits in Odenwald overlooking the city of Darmstadt. It is thought that this castle was the inspiration for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein novel. The name Frankenstein means Stone of the Franks. The name is often used for castles in this region. The castle was built in 1252 by a ruler by the name of Lord Conrad. The castle was enlarged and modernized over the years. During the 18th century, the castle was used as a refuge and hospital ward. Following this, the castle fell into ruins. There are a few myths and legends at the castle. There was a man named Johann Conrad Dippel who reportedly was born in the castle. As he grew up, he became a professional alchemist. As well as this, he became intrigued by anatomy. There are rumors that he started to experiment using human bodies. Even more than this, they said that he attempted to reanimate his experiments using lightning. The people didn't approve of his experiments. The local people still tell stories of Dippel including Mary Shelley's grandmother. It is thought that this was the basis of a story that is well known today. There are many tales like this from the castle. It seems to have seen a lot of phenomenal things since it was built. There is also the story of Lord George and the dragon. In the 1800s, it is said there was a dangerous dragon that lived in the well. Every night, it would crawl from the well and make its way to the local village where it would eat the peasants. They live in fear of the dragon taking more of them. One day, a knight named Lord George came through town and they pleaded with him to end the dragon's reign of terror. The next day he put on his armor and rode up to the castle to find the well. He found the dragon and the two fought for hours. They were both ready to pass out from exhaustion when George landed the final blow to the dragon. As he fell
fell, he struck the knight with his tail which contained poison. The village was so relieved and happy that the dragon was gone, they gave George an honourable burial. To this day you can visit and pay respects to him. It is said that today the ghosts of these tales haunt the castle. Although the castle is in ruins, the stories and spirits still remain. If the Frankenstein story is anything to go by, these are some spirits that you should avoid at all costs. You wouldn't want a reanimated soul coming after you or latching onto your vessel. Coming in at number 4 we have Black Forest. The Black Forest is a large mountain range in southwest Germany. With such an ominous sounding name, it should come as no surprise that the mountain is considered to be haunted. The local folklore tells of ghosts, witches and werewolves. Some even claim that the devil haunts the forest. One of the now most famous stories is that of Der Grobman, who most probably don't know was the origin of Slenderman. The story goes that Der Grobman was a fairy who lived in the Black Forest. The local children were warned if they wandered into the forest they would be taken. For children who did go in the forest despite the warning, the tall man would chase them throughout the forest until he finally caught them. He would often prolong his search to taunt the children. Once he had them in his clutches, he would steal them away. They would never be seen again. His appearance is tall, incredibly thin with multiple upper limbs like that of a spider. It is said he can easily hide behind the trees, making his limbs stretch out like branches of a tree. There are even some woodcuts of the creature reaching back to the 16th to 18th century. There is evidence reaching back even further in time. A journal entry was found of a distraught parent. There is a long history of Der Grobman wreaking havoc on the local community. It is believed that this creature still lives in the Black Forest. The local residents still warn about children wandering off from their family. They try to warn any tourist who would want to camp in the forest or go for a hike overnight. Unless you want to meet the real life Slender Man, I would avoid this on your trip across Germany. In at number 3 we have Theatre Royal. The Theatre Royal sits in London on Drury Lane. During the late 17th century, the theatre was one of the leading theatres in all of London. There were many famous actors who performed at the West End location on a regular basis. The theatre grew in popularity after the Second World War when they pioneered musicals such as Oklahoma, My Fair Lady and Miss Saigon. It is now owned by the famous composer Andrew Lloyd Webber. Although it's no longer the most prestigious theatre in London, it is one of the first and the longest open. Today it is open with a production of Frozen. What a classic. But it is still one of the most haunted locations in London. There have been many people who have passed through the hall since it opened in the 1700s. There are many stories of tragedies that happened here and spirits that could never leave. Although there have been ghostly sightings, the performers see it as an omen of good luck for an upcoming performance. So they're not so much feared but more so welcomed before a show. The most famous ghost is the man in grey. He is a tall man dressed from the 18th century with a top hat and powdered wig holding a prop sword as though he was about to step on stage to perform. There is a story told about why he haunts the theatre. Apparently the man in grey was preparing for his performance when he was stabbed. By who? We will never know. He then walked up into a side passage next to the royal viewing box. He was walled in so thick that no one heard him scream. It is unclear why anyone wanted to do this to the man. His remains were found over a hundred years later and there was finally an explanation for all of the sightings. So if you happen to see him during your visit, try not to get too scared, it means the show will go well. Go see Frozen, it's gonna be a bop. Coming in at number 2 we have Hampton Court Palace. The palace was built in 1514 for Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, the chief minister of King Henry VIII. When the chief fell out of grace with the king, he gave him the palace in an attempt to save face for his family. It soon became the king's favoured residence he then commissioned to have the palace expanded. It is one of the only surviving palaces out of the many the king owned. The house is currently owned by Queen Elizabeth II and the crown. Today the palace is open to the public and a major tourist attraction. The palace is well known for its ghosts. This was a key selling point when open to the public. They knew that the ghosts who live within the walls would give the guests a visit to remember, one of the most seen spirits is that of Jane Seymour who died in 1537. She was the king's third and most beloved wife. She had given the king the son he had longed for. After Prince Edward was born, Jane passed due to complications with the birth. While delighted to have his son, the king was devastated at the sudden loss of his perfect queen. A pale figure in a long white dress is reported to appear on the silver stick stairs which once led up to the room in which Jane gave birth and then passed away. Jane is not only one of King Henry's wives that haunts the halls. Henry's fifth queen, Catherine Howard, had also been seen around the halls. Catherine was known for her wild ways. Her ghost is also known to be more vocal and sighted more often than that of Jane. Catherine was beheaded at the tower in 1542. She was only 19 when she passed. She had been accused of adultery and treason. It is claimed that while she was being transported to the gallows, she broke free. She ran screaming through the halls, begging the king to have mercy on her. She never reached Henry and she would never see him again. It is said she now spends eternity screaming in anguish through those 
same halls. Coming in at number one, we have Stonehenge. No one knows where Stonehenge came from. It has always been surrounded in mystery. Some archaeologists think it was created in 3000 BC to 2000 BC, but it's unclear how they would have the machinery to carve the stones or lift them into place. It is one of the most famous landmarks in the United Kingdom and is now protected to preserve it. It might be strange to believe now, but back in 1915, Stonehenge was up for public auction. Cecil Chubb had no intention to buy the landmark when he went to the auction that day. But when the bids were slow, he managed to win the land for $6,600. Although he had not planned on owning the land or the landmark, once he did, he wanted to restore it. It had fallen into neglect with its past owner and needed some maintenance. He decided that he would fence off the monument and begin charging one shilling for admission to pay for a guard and the restorations needed to restore it. There were a group of Celtic pagans named the Druids. They claimed that their people built the structure and used it as a place of worship. The group hoped to continue to hold their annual summer solstice ceremony there as they believed their ancestors did. The previous owner of Stonehenge had banned them for using it as it was on his land. This led the Druids to curse him. They said for as long as they're denied access to their sacred land, then the curse will follow the owner. Just one year after the curse, the owner lost his only son and heir to his fortune and land. Four months later, he would pass away himself, leaving everything to his widow who put the estate up for auction. Chubb was aware of the curse and did not want some fate to take his own family. He decided to gift Stonehenge to the British government, with one condition that those who live near the monument visit it for free as he did as a child. It is said the curse still remains, along with the ghosts of the ancestors of the druids who were buried there long ago. They watch over the land to make sure their descendants are still connected and no one is mistreating the sacred monument. To this day, the British government does allow the druids to perform their ceremonies each year, until 2019 when the lockdowns forced them to cancel any and all in-person celebrations at Stonehenge. The senior druid spoke out against this warning, saying that this move would not end well for anyone connected to the land. Yikes. Coming in at number 5, we have Tower of London. The Tower of London is most famous for housing the crown jewels. It was also known throughout history for housing some famous prisoners in their final days before execution. It has been the center of many historical events, so it's no surprise that it's haunted by the ghosts of the past. One of the most famous ghosts that haunts the tower is Guy Fawkes. As the rhyme goes, remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason, and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder, treason, should ever be forgot. Every November 5th, British people hold a bonfire to remember the gunpowder treason. In 1605, Guy Fawkes attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. He was hoping to kill the king. His plan was foiled when one of his conspirators told the police of the plan that night before the explosion was going to take place. Guy Fawkes was taken to the Tower of London while awaiting his trial. He was sentenced to be publicly executed and brought out to the square of the tower. He spent his last days in captivity in the tower as well as passing away there. Since then, there have been sightings or whispers of forks from those visiting the towers, especially around the 5th of November when his spirit is the most restless. He is not the only famous ghost who is stuck around the tower. There have been many sightings of Anne Boleyn. She is often seen walking around various rooms after closing by security. Others have seen her staring through the window of the room which she was once imprisoned. A couple of guests have entered that room and heard a distant sound of a woman crying for help. It is believed her spirit is stuck here since her life was was ended so tragically. Coming in at number four, we have Pendle Hill. Pendle Hill might seem like a nice place for a hike in Lancashire, but there is much more than that to it. Since 1612, the land has been haunted due to the actions of the town's people. The Pendle Witch Trials are among the most famous of the witch trials in English history. There were 11 on trial for the use of witchcraft. They were accused for being responsible for the deaths of 10 people who had recently passed. Only one of the accused was found not guilty, the other 10 were to be executed for their use of witchcraft. Once they were found guilty, they were each hanged for their crimes and buried under the hill. There was one witch in particular who was feared. She was referred to as Alice Nutter. She was wealthier than the other witches and was seen to have the most power. She shocked the town with her complete silence during her trial. These ten witches now haunt the area. The people of East Lancashire remain cautious of the witches of Pendle Hill. It has been investigated by many ghost hunting teams. Once claimed, 
claimed that there are more than just the spirits of the witches in the area. They claimed there are also children and airmen who were bombed during the war. The area seems to attract tragedy and many are past there. Locals refuse to go anywhere near the hill after dark as there have been so many sightings of the ghosts. Some have even seen the witches on the hill after dark. One local said they saw what looked like 10 women performing some kind of ritual. Could this be a tribute or the spirits of the witches attempting to communicate with the living? Number 3 on this list is the Rue de Chantre. This is considered by most to be the most haunted streets in France. It's located in Paris on the island and is right next to the Notre Dame Cathedral. This street is said to be haunted by the ghosts of many children. As with most ghost stories, this didn't come out of thin air, but from a horrible tragedy that took place on this street just over 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, there was a hotel that was located on this street. This hotel didn't really act as a hotel though, because during that time there was a massive outbreak of tuberculosis. The children in the area who had come down with the disease were sent to this hotel to quarantine. They were locked in the bedrooms of this hotel and couldn't leave at any point for risk of infecting other people. Some children died during these quarantines, which is already bad, but the main tragedy happened roughly a decade later in 1910. In 1910, there was a great flood of Paris where the River Seine overflowed and flooded the city. All the children that were currently locked inside their bedrooms at this time drowned during that flood. Nobody knows for sure the exact number of children who died in this tragedy, but it was certainly enough to make a spiritual imprint on the street. Now their souls go without rest and live along the street. People have heard the laughter and also the crying of children. They have heard the muffled screams as if they're screaming through water. They've also seen these children before peering out at them from around corners looking extremely sad and lonely. The spot acts as an attraction for supernatural hunters, but a landmark that I wouldn't recommend visiting. Number 2 on this list is Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel is one of the most beautiful and unique castles on the entire planet in my opinion. How it's constructed and where it's located, it almost doesn't even seem like something out of real life. This castle is located off of the Normandy coast and the only connection that it has to France is a road that goes underwater when it's high tide. How this place got made has a bit of a supernatural story to it. Apparently, the archangel Michael appeared to Saint Aubert in a dream and told him to start building here. When he resisted, Michael burned a hole right in his head. After this incident, the castle began its construction and it took quite a while to become the beauty that we have today. It was a work in progress with more things being added over the years. Now because of this castle's location directly in the water, it is extremely hard to attack and was never captured during the 100 years war. During said war, one of the major commanders of this castle was Louis d'Estouville. His ghost is one of the most common sightings at this place. He apparently is responsible for the killing of thousands of English soldiers and had battles that were so deadly the water around them would turn red with blood. He's said to patrol the castle and act as a watchman of sorts for intruders and people posing a threat. Similar to our previous entry of the horse, one of his main objectives is to keep the castle safe. He isn't the only ghost at this spot though. The ghosts of monks can also be seen praying and meditating at this location. For a long time, this castle housed several hundred monks until they were ultimately kicked out from the space. Their spirits still linger in this place though, although they aren't nearly as frightening as the weathered war general, in my opinion. Number one on this list is the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs is unlike anything else on the entire planet and is the breeding ground for scary stories. These catacombs are a collection of tunnels that are underneath the city of Paris and stretch for over 2,000 acres. The tunnels act as an underground cemetery where they house over 6 million dead bodies. This is one of the largest collections of the dead in the entire world and if that wasn't enough, you can actually see their skulls as they all line the walls. These catacombs are extremely difficult to navigate. Seeing as there are over 2,000 acres of them and it's underground, people have reported getting extremely lost when they're trying to explore them. This is part of the reason why only a portion of them are open to the public today. But all of this has led to a plethora of ghost stories and legends over the years. For instance, in 2004, a group of police officers were investigating an area of the catacombs that was closed to the public and they came upon something unexpected. A bar, a living room, a workshop, and a meeting area for over 20 people, they were all found. This was alongside a PA system, a camera system recording the area, and a pirated means of electricity. All of this was more than suspicious, but when the officers returned a few days later with some more people, 
Everything was gone, except for a note that read, don't search. This isn't all there is to the catacombs though. In the 1990s, a group was searching through them and found a video camera lying on the ground. They picked it up and examined it and saw that there was a recording. The recording was clearly of a man who was very lost in the catacombs and extremely frantic. Scary voices could be heard in the background and the heavy breathing of this man indicated his panic. Finally, the camera fell to the ground and we could hear the man scream. These are just two of the more famous stories to come from these catacombs, but so many other ones of ghosts or demons haunting the area have come from this place. If you were to ever go here, then make sure you have a strong sense of direction and a flashlight because the last thing you would want is to get lost in an underground haunted graveyard. In at number 5 we have Berlin Citadel. The citadel was built in 1559 and is known as one of the best preserved military structures in Europe. It was originally built to protect Spandau from attack. Built specifically to have no blind spots giving an advantage on all sides in the event of an attack. The citadel has seen a lot of destruction and war since it was built but the most famous ghost to live there is the spirit of Anna Sido. Anna was married but had a love affair with Joachim II, the local ruler at the time. As the ruler was dying, he asked his son to take care of Anna. The affair had been frowned upon, but as both of their parents had passed, they had grown closer before he got sick. When he passed, his son didn't keep his promise. He immediately imprisoned her in the citadel. No one ever saw Anna again after that. There was no explanation as to where she had gone or if she had been punished for her love affair with the ruler. There had been reports from visitors of the White Lady, a ghost seen walking around the citadel late at night. Some felt a sudden cold breeze and feeling of dread while walking around the grounds, but still there was no explanation. Years later, the citadel was a big tourist attraction and renovations took place. While they began to renovate, they found the remains of Anna. She had been walled into a cell and left there. This seemed to confirm the rumors that she was the white lady for all these years. Some people have seen her late at night, but others have felt her presence. Even after she was found, her spirit had remained. If you visited today, you might catch a glimpse of her if you were to be there after nightfall. Come in at number four, we have Svitkov Castle. The origin of Svitkov goes back to the prehistoric times. A fort was built there in the first century. AD. So it's on the edge of a lake covered in all sides by water making it the perfect place if you're worried about intruders. The castle was built in the early 13th century by King Otaka. It is not known when it was built but the first written mention of the castle was in 1234 when it was owned by the King of Bohemia. It had many owners throughout the years being seized in wars and passed to new rulers. It is now owned by the National Heritage Institute and is open to guests. It is regarded by locals as the creepiest place in Germany. Many refuse to visit or leave before it gets dark as not to disturb the spirits they believe to live there. They believe that the castle is home to a dark supernatural entity. They believe it had been since prehistoric times and has never left the land. There are often voices heard from around the castle. Technical faults happen often with no explanation. It's also been said many animals refuse to go into the building and act strange on the land outside the castle. There have been many times where the staff had lit candles to light up the halls when night falls. There have been times when every candle had been blown out at once, sending chills down the spines of anyone in the area. The most haunted part of the castle is the main tower. There are reports that if you sleep in the tower you will pass away within the year. There are at least two confirmed cases of this happening throughout the castle's history. Coming in at number 3 we have Elts Castle. Elts Castle is nestled in the hill of Germany. It is still owned by the families who originally built it more than 33 generations ago. Elts Castle is one of the only castles left which has never been destroyed by the events of the medieval era or subsequent wars. The house is split into three sections due to the three families who built on the land together. The Ruben the Kempenich and Rodendorf sections of the home are open to the public, but the Kempenich branch of the family uses the other third of the castle. The public can visit to view the treasury. They have gold, silver and other historic artifacts, including an armory with weapons. The castle is a popular tourist attraction and not just for its beauty and history. It is also a hotspot for ghosts. Although the castle has never been destroyed due to war, it has still seen its fair share of battles and tragic events. It is said that if you were to visit the castle in the later hours, you would see the night patrol. Only there is an any patrol, or at least none dressed in full night gear standing in formation like you might see. It is rumoured that the ghosts of past night still patrol the land. They might have died while standing their ground, refusing to leave their post in their death. They still keep watch over the castle. They have been seen walking around looking for any possible intruders. Coming in at number 2 we have Barbenhausen Barracks. The town of Barbenhausen includes a lot of medieval structures including a castle from the 12th century. They also have a city wall that was mostly knocked down during war along with many old homes that were used during World War II. 
too. When the last member of the family who built and owned the town died, there was a 35 year conflict over who would have the right to inherit it. The town has seen a lot of battles and conflict for a small town situated close to Frankfurt. It seems the land here was sought after and people were willing to fight to get it. The town still stands today with the remains of its past, a little run down but still standing. It is believed that areas of the town are haunted by the ghosts of World War II soldiers. There have been classic signs of paranormal activity reported by locals and those who happen to pass through the town. Lights in homes turn off and on by themselves, even ones that are unlived in. Others have heard stomping footsteps with no source. It sounds like a great number of soldiers marching all at once but if you were to investigate you would see nothing there to create the noise. The most terrifying part of the hauntings are the voices. They have been heard in multiple homes, they often come from the basement like a whisper. When you hear the voices you are filled with fear as if the voices are scared of being found out. There is also an individual ghost in the area, a woman's voice has been heard speaking backwards or in some language no one could understand. It has been reported that a witch was burned at the stake in the 19th century and it's believed she is still there. Some say she seduced and attacked several German soldiers in an attempt to protect her land when they were staying in the town. The town is full of history that might intrigue you to visit but be warned there are many spirits trapped here and they might not all be so friendly. And finally in at number 1 we have Kranzberg Castle. Kranzberg Castle was built in 1170 to fortify the area of Kranzberg. The medieval building was acquired by the military and used for intelligence purposes during World War II and the Cold War. It has over time been restored to its original state to preserve its history. During its military use it gained a lot of negative stories and people viewed it as somewhere to avoid at all cost. After the war it was turned into a prison camp for war criminals. It's reported that the castle has seen a lot of death. People may have been tortured for information or to find out their involvement in the war. Either way, the energy here was evil. Since this period of time, there have been reports of paranormal events happening frequently. There is even a bunker that was built under the castle to contain the secret of things happening here. This links to other buildings in the area. They use this to smuggle prisoners under the castle. If you were to visit the castle or if you brave the bunker, if you can find it, you would experience some intense paranormal activities. Screams have been heard from around the castle, screams that are begging for help or for mercy. There have even been ghosts dressed in military uniform walking around the castle late at night. There is a lot of mystery here and secrets that people wanted to hide from the public. You might get surprised if you were to investigate too much into what happened here. Number 5 on this list is the Buddha Labyrinth. Buddha Labyrinth is a series of tunnels that are all connected under Budapest. It's a naturally forming system that humans have cultivated. They've used this place for many different purposes since ancient times. Storage and shelter are right up there as being some of the biggest. They've also, however, hosted some pretty dark and disturbing things here. These tunnels have been used as torture chambers before. They've been used as a prison before and even a dungeon back in the day. Due to some of these darker times that the tunnels have seen, it's believed that there's some residual dark energy that resides here and the tunnels themselves are ultimately haunted. Some of the most commonly spotted spirits in these tunnels are that of three women. A while back, three female skeletons were found in the depths here. The cause of death was never fully confirmed, but it was believed by how they found them that it would have been horribly brutal. These three ghosts haunt this place all the time, and there are even stories about how they used to take people. They would leave the confines of these tunnels and drag unsuspecting victims down here to die. That hasn't happened for several hundred years though, so I think that we're all pretty safe in that regard. They aren't alone down here though. The souls of those who were tortured to death still linger here and oftentimes make themselves known to visitors. Disembodied voices, screams, moans, the feeling of someone's hands grazing over you as you walk past. All of these are very common occurrences down here. We've just seen it time and time again where a place sees a little bit too much darkness and hate and then becomes haunted. The Buddha Labyrinth is definitely one of those examples. Highly recommend keeping it off your itinerary if you're traveling to Hungary anytime soon. Number 4 on this list is Witch Island. Yeah, literally a place called Witch Island obviously is going to be making the list. There's an ancient legend that surrounds this island which has given it its name. It was a classic case where people were thought to be witches and were wrongly accused of such and then ultimately put to death. Let's Travel says, It might seem like a pleasant and relaxed place, but there is a creepy story following this place. Sezgid was suffering from a serious drought, and the locals were praying for that. Suddenly one day, rain starts with chunks of ice falling from the sky, and many locals were convinced of witchcraft. 
For that reason, 12 people were caught believing that they were witches. They killed them, and since then, locals say that they hear desperate voices crying for help on the riverside. Apparitions are also seen super regularly. These are just normal people too, or at least, that's what people think. It's pretty much common knowledge at this point that these women weren't witches at all, but just regular people. These ghosts that show up are desperate and in need, and they look really sad. They probably won't hurt you, but they'll definitely make you feel something. I'd stay away from this island if you can. Come in at number 3, Osnabrück. Osnabrück was once the site in a major pagan temple and burial area. The pagans decided that they would attempt to convert the German people to the Christian faith. This led to a massacre taking place at the temple. The local forces took the lives of those there, including the priests. They then desecrated the graves and broke their altar stones. The pagans built their temples and buried the dead on sacred land. It is believed that this act disturbed the deep magic infused in the land. Now, every year during the winter solstice and summer equinox, something strange happens on the land. Strange orbs of light have been seen moving around the area. Screams are heard from miles away. Stains appear on the stones that still lay there today. Although the town have now been built away from the graveyard, you can still visit today. Many locals avoid the land as the spirits there seem angry about what happened to their descendants. It is thought these spirits wield great power and could have revenge when and if they choose to. If you do choose to visit, you need to be warned to be respectful. Do your research before and careful when you arrive. Many have reported seeing terrifying things or feelings like being watched while there. No one visits during the solstice and equinox as this is when the spirits are the most active. Coming in at number 2 we have Peacock Island. Peacock Island is situated in the River Havel in Berlin. In 1685, chemist Johann Kuchnell was given financial aid to build a glass foundry on the east of the island. Here he discovered how to produce artificial red glass. When he left the island in 1692, it remained unused for about 100 years until 1793. In 1793, the Prussian King Frederick built the castle for himself and his mistress. This was then passed down through the family and used for many different reasons, including being used as an exotic farm. Although the island has a long and exciting history, there are claims it is the original Johann Kuchnell who inhabits the island long after her death. It is claimed that Johann was not only into creating glass, but that he experimented with dark magic. It is believed that through his experiments with black magic, he had cursed himself. He attempted to flee the island as to not be attached to the curse, but this didn't work. In the afterlife, he was bound to the land and his old foundry. Those who have visited the island have seen a black figure with glowing red eyes. He is often seen at the stroke of midnight. When he is near, you can feel the chill in your bones. You know that you are in the presence of darkness just by being on the island during his hour. His laboratory still stands today and some have tried to find his old lab to learn all the dark magic and secrets that he tried to hide. It is said a fire nearly destroyed the building. The police believe this to be man-made and it's speculated he was trying to destroy the demons and spirits he had accidentally been working with in the lab. He couldn't escape the curse and if you don't want to meet the same fate, I would avoid visiting this building. And finally in at number 1 we have the Waldneal Hostert School. The school was first built in 1913 and then closed in 1937 when it was then used by the National Socialism Party. They wanted to use the building as part of their euthanasia program. They wanted to make their bloodlines pure and strong and they had the idea to use the building to house anyone who was not seen as genetically healthy. All those with hereditary illnesses or who were severely mentally and physically handicapped were classified as lives unworthy of life. They would invite the people they deemed to fall into this category to live in the facility before they would eliminate them. According to data collected, more than 260,000 people fell victim to their war against sick. This was just one of many of these facilities run around Germany. With all of the horrible acts committed here, it is no surprise that it is haunted with the lost souls. The people lost here were taken suddenly and their spirits remain unable to pass on. Some people who have visited reporting hearing blood curdling cries coming up the walls in every direction. Others have seen shadows darting from room to room as though they are watching those who walk there. Other ghosts have been seen looking through the windows or sitting inside the rooms late at night. They don't seem to have bad intentions, but they seem to be distraught, which can be equally as dangerous if you were to stumble across them unknowingly. Some even claim to see children who have disappeared as soon as they were noticed. The stories from those who have visited are terrifying and chilling to hear. It is enough to warn anyone away from attempting to visit the old school. Number 5 on this list is Kachini Castle. Kachini Castle was a castle built in the 13th century in south central Poland. 
This castle was host to many battles over the years until it ultimately fell in the 18th century. Many Polish kings lived in this castle, at least at one point of their reign, and at one point it was rather marvelous. Now it's a ruin of its former self and still haunted by a ghost of a past royal. Queen Bona Sforza lived a very interesting and lavish lifestyle for someone in the 1500s. She was initially born in Milan to a very wealthy and powerful Italian family. This family's influence was vast and many powerful people wanted to wed Bona Sforza. Eventually, Polish King Sigismund, nicknamed the Old, was the selected suitor and the pair got married. This made Bona Sforza Queen Bona Sforza of Poland. It's the ghost of this Polish queen that is said to haunt the castle walls to this day though. A lady in white that floats through the walls of the ruined castle searching for something. Or at least that's what people have reported when they've seen her. They say that her ghost looks as if she's trying to find something that she lost. That her ghost looks extremely troubled and distraught. This all stems back to the legend of what happened when she was alive. The manner of her death is hazy at best, but whilst she was living, it's believed that Queen Bona Sforza hid a bundle of treasure somewhere around this castle. Many people think it was beneath the river near the castle, whilst others believe it's underneath the castle itself. Either way, now her soul continually wanders the grounds searching for this treasure as if finding it will release her from this purgatory state. From the reports that I read, many people don't think that she is dangerous, which is a good thing, but they have noted feeling very sad around this castle. Some people have said that after visiting said castle, it felt as if a cloud of depression hung over them for several months after the fact. Potentially the same feeling the soul of Queen Bona Sforza has all the time. Number 4 on this list is the Skull Chapel of Kazurmna. This is one of the creepiest spots in Europe if you ask me. This is a Polish church that was built in 1776 to 1804 by Father Wakla Tomaszek. When he first started building this church, he got hit with a pretty unsettling surprise. Digging into the ground, he discovered bones, and then more bones, and then more bones after that. Thousands of dead remains littered the area right underneath his feet where his church was being built. This didn't stop him though, in fact, it only inspired him. He got the local undertaker and then they collectively worked on digging up every single remain that they could find. They learned that these dead bodies were from a mass grave that was put there during the Thirty Years War which happened over a century prior. After cleaning off all of the dead skulls and bones, the father took them and hung them all throughout his church. Now you have this incredibly eerie room with over 3,000 skulls and bones hanging down from the walls. Obviously a location like this has sparked some rumors of a haunting over the past years. People believe that the spirits of the dead soldiers were angered that their grave was disturbed and now their spirits haunt the church. Reports of incredible uneasiness is said to be felt by most people that enter this space and stay there for a while. Honestly though, I'm not sure if this is indicative of a haunting in this case. Pretty sure anyone would feel uneasy if they were standing in the middle of 3,000 dead skulls that were all staring down at them. Number 3 on this list is Salgo Tarjani Cemetery. Cemeteries are supposed to be peaceful places where the dead can pass. But sometimes that doesn't happen and they end up like this one. Deeply haunted. Orbitz writes, On the far outskirts of Budapest lies a forgotten cemetery straight out of a horror movie. The tall, imposing stone gates now face an outline set on train tracks with an eerie silence only broken a few times an hour by a passing train. A knock on the gates results in two large guard dogs rushing to the iron bars, jaws slapping as they attempt to ward off any unwelcome visitors. Inside, the giant walls of the once magnificent cemetery are rows of impressive tombs of certainly important people of their time. This cemetery is the oldest Jewish burial ground on the pest side of the city, but fell into ruins after most of the Jewish population was forced out of the area during World War II. After a short stint as a Soviet military hangout, the forest is slowly trying to take back the land gnawing around the massive stone and marble burial chambers. Over the years, many of the tombs have been opened and looted of anything of value. The disturbed and derelict cemetery is sure to have at least a few angered spirits still hanging around, making it a place that you may not want to visit after sunset. Angered spirits is right, guys. There are countless stories of people getting literally attacked by unknown entities that they can't defend themselves against. I imagine that these are the spirits of the individuals whose graves were robbed. That is just such a blatant act of darkness that it's bound to wake up the spirits of the dead and anger them. 
I'm also under the impression that some people were killed here during World War II, which most likely only adds to the haunting. The guard dogs are there for a reason, and in this case, it might actually be for our own safety. Number two on this list is the town of Versprum. This town is also known as the Soviet Ghost Town. Atlas Obscura says, The forest is slowly eating the crumbling buildings within the ghost town. Once a bustling Soviet military base, it now looks like an eerie post-apocalyptic wasteland. This was mainly built in the 1960s to house Soviet soldiers. It functioned like a tiny town for the soldiers and their families, forming an isolated, self-sustaining community. It had many fixtures you'd expect to see in any civilian town, like schools, a movie theater, pubs, and restaurants, though most of the base was dominated by large blocks of barracks. After the Soviet Union fell in the late 1980s, many of the residents left the base. The Hungarian Defense Forces were gradually laid off, and the nearby War Helicopter Regiment became defunct in 2004. Now the base's only visitors are curious urban explorers and the occasional airsoft players who dart and duck around many of the neglected buildings. It didn't take long for the abandoned town to begin looking like a scene from an end-of-the-world action thriller. The buildings have begun to fade and fall. Greenery creeps over the unused streets and climbs the walls of the derelict structures. Nature is reclaiming the site from civilization, slowly clutching it within its grasp. So to begin, the town is already pretty freaking creepy. However, there's been rumors of an entity that lives here as well. In the time since it's been abandoned, people believe that a beast or monster has taken up residence here. The few people who have gone here have reported the feeling of being stalked as if something similar to a predator lives here now and it's out to get them. Talks of a potential werewolf have been thrown out there as well, which I can honestly believe. Whatever this creature is, it's dangerous. Stay away from this town at all costs. And finally, number one on this list is the Isvantelic Train Yard. This is an abandoned train yard where old cars rot away. Some of these cars rotting here though have seen their fair share of horrors. Atlas Obscura says, More than 100 locomotives and train cars rot away, some in deteriorating depots, others out in the field. Among these are some very rare train engines and a few cars that are said to have transported prisoners to Auschwitz during the Holocaust. Built at the beginning of the 20th century as a repair yard for the National Railway, only a few southern parts of the train yard are still in use, while most of it is abandoned. Two large depots, a few smaller sheds, and open-air areas are scattered with locomotives and rail cars, some of them very ancient, others more recent, from Hungary's time as part of the Soviet regime. Some of the trains were brought here to be repaired and then were to be put to the Budapest Railway Museum, but never made it to the display and were instead left behind in the train yard. Now one big reason that they never made it is because these cars are haunted, guys. The literal car that went to Auschwitz. Just think how many horrors that tiny box has seen. The souls of those who were forced in there still linger, and this train yard is haunted because of it. I feel for these souls, too. They never asked for this, and now they've just been forgotten by the world. Hopefully, one day, they can find rest. Number five on this list is the Devil's Precipice. The Devil's Precipice is located in the village of Cosmonel and is definitely one of the cooler entries on this list in my opinion. The Devil's Precipice is basically one big dangerous treasure hunt. The legend says that bandits hid some very valuable treasure here hundreds of years ago after they pulled off a massive heist. They didn't just leave it here though, but they actually cursed the treasure in the area around it so that the only people who could ever get it would be them. This was many, many years ago, and since then this curse has made it impossible for those who are hunting this treasure to ever actually find it. It's said that this area can be haunted by a bunch of different things, and your experience searching for this treasure differs from person to person. It's not uncommon though for those seeking this treasure to completely lose their minds. Apparently these people won't even be able to fully describe their experience after they finished, but their brains will just have gone to complete mush, and they're just a shell of their former selves. Some people are lucky enough to not get this face but instead come face to face with some bull-like demons. The body of a human with the head of a bull. These creatures are said to guard the treasure and will stop at nothing to keep you from taking it. The luckiest people don't need to deal with either of these things though and instead just get wildly confused and lost. When someone is approaching the treasure, it's said that a spell will be cast on them. They'll blink and then they'll find themselves many kilometers away from where they previously were. Their bodies just go into this trance-like state and they completely lose 
lose all sense of direction just walking aimlessly through the woods. Oftentimes when they're found, they're completely covered in scratch marks and have no idea what happened to them. The lure of buried treasure is appealing, but it's clear that this is a treasure that just simply doesn't want to be found, and it's going to do anything to stop you from getting it. Number four on this list is the Chiagna Monastery. Built in 1780, this monastery is located outside the capital city of Romania. Even though Romanians back in the day spent a long time building this place, it was never really used for anything. It was never properly blessed or consecrated, and because of that, it's been host to a series of unfortunate events. It is now the site of paranormal activity. Only 10 years after it was built, Turkish troops came in and raided it. During the raid, they set a fire in this building and everything burned, but the building still stood. Then, several years later, the building and those who were in it got hit with a massive outbreak of the plague, and if that wasn't bad enough, the building was also hit later with a massive earthquake, which caused the bell tower to collapse, and the bell was drawn away by a nearby river. The fact that there's any building left standing at all is actually kind of a marvel, but due to its history, locals say it's super haunted. People warn you of going to this place because if you do, it's said that you'll get hit with some horrible luck. There have also been sightings of very sickly individuals, assumingly victims of the plague outbreak that happened many years ago. The most common paranormal experience at this place, though, is the ringing of a bell. The same bell that fell off so many years ago will ring out when there's a full moon in the sky. Honestly, the ringing of a bell isn't too bad and would actually be pretty cool to experience if it was a full moon, but if you do decide to go, then I recommend keeping your distance. You don't want to get a slew of bad luck following you around just so you could hear this one ghost bell. Number three on this list is Mount Sleza. Mount Sleza is a Polish mountain in the Sudeten Forland, southern Poland. This mountain has an incredible amount of lore and history connected to it. There's a great article detailing the power connected to this mountain called Psychic Haunting Mount Sleza, written by a man named Nathan, and I'm going to quote his article now. The truth is that Sleza is an ancient ritual site of local Celtic culture later on used by other pagan societies before Christianity came. Over hundreds of years, the place filled with positive spiritual energies, and for this day, these energies can be sensed. It's also a haunted place, but not by some ghosts and apparitions, but by real spirits, and I'm talking about spirits that were never human. Some people call these entities the spirits of nature. In any case, these are the spirits of the mountain. They protect it, and they help people in their spiritual pursuits. As spirits of this sort, they can be very helpful, but also very dangerous if you fail to show them proper respect. Unfortunately, a lot of tourists fail to show this kind of respect by leaving rubbish on tourist routes or even by sitting on cult sculptures. Don't do this no matter what kind of sacred place you're visiting. You wouldn't sit down on a crucifix if you're Christian, would you? So that's the history of this mountain and how it's come to be haunted by some ancient spirits. Now the good thing about this mountain is if you ever do decide to go, you don't need to be haunted. If you walk in and you show these ancient spirits respect, then you may even receive a good vision from them. This place will basically give you back what you put into it, so if you do decide to go, then approach it seriously and you should be fine. Number two on this list is Czoka Castle. This is another Polish castle that was built in the 13th century, but this one is far more haunted than the last. We currently don't know exactly what the initial castle would have looked like because in 1909, it was rebuilt to resemble the style of the 18th century. It's a very beautiful castle and located right next to a river with incredible scenery. This castle is absolutely riddled with ghosts though. The first ghosts to mention and the ones that you would interact with first if you were to visit this castle is a group of dead that lie at the bottom of the river. Back in 1719, as a funeral was taking place, people were walking the casket over the castle bridge. That bridge collapsed into the river and several of the people who fell in drowned. It's been reported by many people going to this castle that the screams of those who drowned can still be heard as you walk over said bridge. The scariest part is that their screams aren't the loudest ones there. A woman's cries for help are the ones that can be heard the most when passing over this bridge, and it's believed that those cries belong to Joachim von Nitz's wife. Joachim was one of the owners of this castle during its history, and what he's remembered for at this location is rather brutal. His wife had an affair and got pregnant with another man's child. Joachim felt exceptionally betrayed and hurt, so he responded by drowning his wife in that river. This wasn't enough for him though, because he actually allowed her to give birth, and then as she watched, he took her newborn child and bricked it up in the chimney. This is why when people pass by the chimney in this castle, the screaming of a newborn can be heard ringing throughout. Believe it or not though, there's still another ghost that haunts this place. 
This woman's name was Gertrude and she lived at this place before any of the other ghosts did. One evening she got in a heated argument with her brother. This sparked her inevitable betrayal where she set an army upon this castle. They didn't conquer the castle though and she was found out. Her brother held nothing back and beheaded her for her actions whilst also cursing her in the process. Now her spirit is cursed to live in this castle forever. For anybody that's counting, that makes four separate ghosts that live at this castle. Certainly not a spot that I would recommend visiting. Number one on this list is the Rice Complex. The Rice Complex is a massive underground city with a connection of tunnels that is located inside the Owl Mountains. This was a project that the Germans started in World War II in 1943. Now, the exact purpose behind this project is currently unknown, however most assume that it was going to act as a secret German military defense base. It was never fully finished with about only half of the project getting constructed, but if it ever was fully constructed then capturing it would have been extremely difficult considering it would have been impossible to bomb as it's located in a mountain and physically storming up said mountain to take it would have proven even more challenging. Even though Though it's only half finished, there was still a massive amount of infrastructural work done on this project. It's estimated that 257,000 cubic meters of reinforced concrete was brought into these tunnels during the two years it was under construction. It's also believed that some of the tunnels and pathways haven't even been discovered yet. This is partly because some of the tunnels have flooded over the years, but frankly, it could be a blessing in disguise as they're said to be very haunted. Now, I don't think I need to describe in detail some of the brutalities that the Germans committed during World War II. We're all aware of how abhorrent some of those actions were. The construction of this project, it was no exception. Many of the prisoners who were forced to work on this complex were either killed or died from being overworked. Lots of people lost their lives far too soon and it's really sad to think about. The people who have been in these tunnels have said that all of that brutality left its mark. Some of the souls of those who died here still haunt it to this day. People have reported seeing ghostly apparitions wandering through the tunnels and the sounds of hard labor reverberating throughout. I'm not actually even sure if you can visit this place but I wouldn't recommend going even if you could. In at number five, we have Ghost Castle. In the town of Bios in Serbia on the slopes of Frescogora mountains rest an abandoned building in ruins and long forgotten. Known originally as the Spitzer Castle, it was once one of the most beautiful sites in all of Serbia, with glass gardens, peacocks and deer, somewhere you would only hear about in a fairy tale. It was built in the late 19th century by Edward Eddie Spitzer, who was the co-owner of the Biasin Cement Factory. Spitzer hired the famous architect Imre Stindl, best known for his work on the Hungarian Parliament Building in Budapest. The architectural styles of Spitzer Castle include elements of Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and Romanesque art. In 1889 the mansion had been finished and the Spitzer family moved into the castle and lived there until World War II, then leaving in 1941 and moving to Germany. After the war the ownership of the castle went to the state and then at various points in time it hosted a school, library, the first Biosyn radio station and a restaurant, but as time went on the building was slowly deteriorating. It was also used as a film set for many movies including the 1970 American war film Kelly's Heroes starring Clint Eastwood. Today the castle is deserted, surrounded by wires, without door or windows and crumbling rooftops. The locals had nicknamed the building as the ghost house due to many people hearing, seeing and coming into contact with paranormal entities. On more than one account people hear footsteps and screams coming from one of the bedrooms. This creepy decaying building is scary enough but many dark tourism enthusiasts come here to see if they too can come into contact with any ghosts and haunted beings. There is a theory from the locals that a boy was roaming the home with his friends but had gone off on his own and never returned. The boy's friends said they heard screams and when they had run over to the area it was coming from nothing. They had searched in and around the building but the boy was never found and to this day people still hear his screams. This is one place you should never visit because you may never come back. Coming in at number 4 we have Devil's Town. Devolja Veros, which translates to English as Devil's Town, is a very unusual rock formation said to be created by soul erosion. These peculiar rock towers are located between the Devil's Gully and Hell's Gully near the town of Kursom Lija in southern Serbia. Located on Mount Radin are more than 200 stone formations, 2 to 15 meters high and up to 3 meters wide, with strange stone caps. This particular place is a huge tourist destination, not only because of its beautiful and unique looking rock towers, but also because of the 
legend surrounding this eerie place. Locals believe that these weird looking rock formations are actually petrified remains of a cursed wedding party. Apparently these poor people drank from a nearby spring which attracted the devil himself who tried to cloud their minds and force a brother and sister into marriage. Once the word got to a local fairy she decided to interfere and turn them all into stone. The local still insists that the area is haunted by the devil and refused to spend a night there. If you're brave enough to go to this cursed place, all I have to say is don't overstay your welcome. Devil's Town and their odd looking rock towers continue to be a very rare natural phenomenon and was actually a nominee in the new 7 wonders of nature campaign. Definitely one of the most visited places in Serbia whether it's because it's beauty or it's haunted past, it's unknown its true origins but it's definitely a very creepy place. If you're still willing to travel and see this place maybe just leave before the sun sets just in case. Number 3 on this list is Giamana. Giamana is currently an abandoned Romanian village that isn't doing too hot right now. Everything about this town was nice and quaint until in 1978 when its world got turned upside down. Communist ruler at the time, Nicola Ceasescu, decided that he wanted to exploit a massive reserve for copper that was close to the village. This copper mine produced incredible amounts of copper and was extremely profitable, but it was at the expense of these villagers. Mining copper creates a lot of waste. Waste that you can't just put anywhere. Well, the dictator decided that the perfect spot was the village of Giamana. All the local villagers were ousted from their homes and sent over 100 kilometers away and given little compensation for their houses and their trouble. Then their homes and their village was swallowed up by a sea of toxic waste that's literally still here to this day. Nowadays you can only see the top of the church poking its head out of this dangerous lake of poison. Before the villagers left it's said that they put a curse on this land. Those with ill intentions will feel the effects of despair despair and loneliness forever. They'll feel like an outcast from their homes, from society and from their family and friends. It's said that they wanted to make those who came to this place with ill intentions feel how they felt when they had to leave their homes and go to a completely new place with no warning. Make them feel like they don't belong and they're a burden on those around them. This feeling is echoed by those who visited this place and locals say that if you do want to see this in person, to make sure that your intentions are nothing but kind and gentle. Factor in a whole other reason why you shouldn't go to this place but it's literally because it's a giant lake of toxic waste and I'm just guessing here but I imagine that that's not ideal to be breathing in. Number 2 on this list is Dracula's Castle. This wouldn't be a complete list if I didn't bring up Romania's most famous fictional character and his residence. The castle, also known as Brand Castle, is located in Transylvania which is also in Romania. It shares a shocking resemblance to Dracula's Castle in Bram Stoker's classic novel. Dracula being a vampire would walk around his castle walls by himself, occasionally coming out at nighttime to feast on human victims or turn them into other vampires. The character of Dracula is often associated with Vlad the Impaler and even though Vlad didn't spend too much of his time at this castle, it's believed that this castle is the inspiration for Dracula's home. Now I should note that this castle probably isn't actually haunted. Unlike the other entries on this list, this castle isn't known for having horrible atrocities take place inside its walls. The horrible tragedies that occurred all took place within some mind and then that person wrote them on a page for all of us to envision. Therefore, in all honesty, I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit with this entry because I do think that you should go and visit Dracula's castle. There aren't actual ghosts there so you're not risking any harm befalling you and you get to literally walk through the walls imagining Dracula doing the same thing. They have a restaurant by this castle, they have tons of events there and they even throw the occasional party. On Halloween you can go there for a special event and celebrate in Dracula's literal castle. I actually don't think I can come up up with a cooler place to celebrate Halloween on Earth than in Dracula's castle, but if you guys can, then comment it down below. However, I don't know what it's gonna take to beat out Dracula's literal home. So, number one on this list is Corvin Castle. Corvin Castle, even though it wasn't written as Dracula's castle, honestly should have been. This is a castle in Romania that has seen its fair share of horrors and it's deeply haunted because of it. This castle has had tons of horror stories over the years. One of them says that Vlad the Impaler was actually held captive here for seven years in the dungeons. That he lived off of rats and he impaled them after he'd eaten them. That his deep desire for 
blood and death rose as he was trapped between these walls. Another legend talks of three Turkish prisoners who were promised freedom if they dug a 100 foot deep well. The prisoners did this and it took them over 15 years to accomplish the project but when they were finished were mercilessly thrown back into their cells and tortured. This castle even has a bear pit in the dungeons. It's said that those who were sentenced to death would be taken and thrown into this bear pit with a hungry bear inside and mauled to death by the animal. Horrific torture devices have been found in this castle and other dark sadistic things that have made it one of the most haunted spots in all of Romania. Now due to all this violence there are several curses and hauntings that hang over this place. The first one is the well. Locals warn to never drink from that well and also if you visit this castle throw a coin down there and say a prayer. The three Turkish prisoners who dug it cursed it before they died and made it so that bad things will come to those who drink the water. The second is a monk. There was a monk who was staying at this castle who was caught eavesdropping on a conversation between two people. He was taken outside and bricked until he died. His spirit still roams around the halls of this building to this day with some people reportedly having conversations with him before. Several other people have seen ghostly apparitions of those who look to be dead and some have even seen full scenes of people being brutally tortured. Dread, despair, depression. These are all commonly reported feelings from visitors of this castle. Certainly not a spot that I recommend going if you do find yourself in Romania. Number five on this list is Casa Lercaro. This is a beautiful casa in tenor life and there is a ghost that haunts it consistently. Idealista says, the origins of this scary story are related to the old house of the Lacaro family which is located in Caledon San Augustin and dates back to the late 16th century. Catalina lived in this building. Many believe that this girl was the daughter of Antonio Lacaro and that she was forced to marry an elderly man and for this reason the young woman decided to take her own life by throwing herself into a well at the back of the house, an area which is now closed with a wall. Legend has it that Catalina's body is buried in one of the rooms within the house and haunts the property to this day. This is due to the fact that because she took her own life, the church denied giving her a Christian burial in a cemetery. This lack of a proper burial is probably leading to the fact that her ghost can't rest. As we've seen before on this channel countless times, people who get cast away like that regardless of their circumstances, their spirit often clings to the living. I doubt that they can help this in any way, it's just kind of the way things like this operate. It also doesn't help getting your body literally stuffed into the walls of your building and also taking your own life usually isn't the best either. Regardless of why this place is haunted though, it definitely is. The disembodied voice of this woman is heard frequently and it often manifests itself in this shrieking scream cry that's very unsettling for all of those who listen. Some have seen her apparition appear before them, but apparently this is a pretty rare occurrence. Number four on this list is the Madrid Sanatorium. As with most countries, there is a sanatorium that makes the list as being one of the most haunted. It just so happens to be one of the locations that sees the most tragedies in the world and therefore often has a clumping of dark spirits and energy. Idealista says, this sanatorium in the region of Madrid was built in 1941 to treat some of the most serious diseases that were plaguing the civilian population back then. These diseases were tuberculosis, leprosy, polio, fibrosis, and lung cancer. It was eventually converted into a psychiatric hospital and in 1995, it closed its doors once and for all. Until not long ago, it was possible to go inside and visitors could find the records and personal objects of former patients. Those who have been there speak of mysterious presences in the corridors, electrical devices that strangely stop working for no reason, and doors that suddenly close violently. Many people also claim to have seen lights in the immensity of plants that resemble lanterns walking around. I mean, it really is no wonder why this place is haunted, guys. We went from a sanatorium to a psychiatric hospital and it's clear that both places saw a lot of death in their time. It should also be noted that psychiatric hospitals back in the day were not nearly as good as they are now. People were very often mistreated at these places and it's not common to see those spirits linger on. There truly is no reason for you to be traveling to this place other than to test your luck with the ghosts. Something that I really don't recommend doing.
Coming in at number 3 we have the Skull Tower. This stone structure is located in Nis, Serbia and almost 1000 human skulls are embedded in the walls. Constructed by the Ottoman Empire in 1809 following the Battle of Zagar during the first Serbian uprising. During the battle, Serbian rebels under the command of Stephen Sindelik were surrounded by the Ottomans on Siga Hill near Nis. Knowing that he and his fighters would be killed if they were captured, Stephen detonated a powder magazine within the rebel entrenchment, killing not only himself but also his fighters and the Ottoman soldiers. After this massacre, the governor of the Romelia, Ialet, Hushid Pasha, ordered that a tower be made from the skulls of the fallen. The tower is 15 feet high and consisted of 952 skulls embedded on four sides in 14 rows. So many lives were lost at the skull tower, and the history and skulls displayed are proof of that. And many believe that these lost souls still roam the area and is considered to be a very haunted attraction in Siberia. In 1861, Mithat Pasha, the last Ottoman governor of Nis, ordered that the skull tower be dismantled, but that did not happen. It was eventually restored and the chapel was renovated in 1937. In 1948, Skull Tower and the chapel enclosing it were declared cultural monument of exceptional importance and came under protection of the Socialist Republic of Serbia, and further renovation of the chapel occurred in 1989. Many Serbians see this display as a symbol of the country's struggle for independence. As of this year, only 58 skulls remain in the tower walls, and Cinderlek's skull is said to be featured in an enclosed glass container next to the structure. The skull tower is a very popular tourist attraction, visited by 30,000 to 50,000 people annually to see this eerie and creepy display. Coming in at number 2 we have Mount Ratanj. This is a mountain located in eastern Serbia between the towns of Bolijevec and Sokobanja and is one of the highest peaks in Serbia and is another huge phenomenon. Many stories have emerged from onlookers and tourists that go to Ratanj, stories about unusual flying objects which circle around the peak, fiery spheres, aliens and voices in unknown languages have been some of many things people experience here. This mountain is also talked about by many due to its beauty, size and perfect geometrical shape resembling a pyramid. Ratanj actually has the same angle of inclination as the Pyramid of the Mood in Mexico, and same angles as the Pyramid of Cheops, and many believe that this is not coincidence. The mystery surrounding Ratanj is still the reason for many scientists' arguments. Some say the mountain is actually an ancient pyramid, a natural wonder, the work of a higher power of even aliens. Another local legend explains that the castle of a wizard was located on Ratanj Mountain, where he held his treasure, but the castle had eventually disappeared within the mountain, trapping the wealthy sorcerer inside with his treasures, making this a very popular location for treasure hunters in search for lost gold and gems. So many questions loom over Mount Ratanj and has created a whirlwind of theories and tourists to come and try and experience the many things rumoured to happen here. Others come to Ratanj for the rare healing herbs that grow on the mountains and it emits a type of energy which is beneficial to human health, but this is only a rumour. Everyone who has visited this mountain say they experience a mysterious energy. We may never know if this is positive or or negative. And finally in number 1 we have Sava Savanovic's Mill. This is one of the most well known places in Serbia for its ghost stories. This mill is located in the hill of the small village of Saroj in the west central part of Serbia, three hours away from the town of Belgrade. The story is that Sava Savanovic was a vampire and the first ever vampire that resided at this mill. According to one story, Sava was a wealthy cattle trader and he had fallen in love with a much younger girl who he had proposed to but she had rejected him. Blind Blinded by anger and jealousy, he decided to kill the girl. After the locals of Saroj found out, they beat Sava to death and buried him outside the local cemetery. But actually, Sava had risen and became a vampire and began drowning everyone who would come to grind grain in his mill. For years, the locals of Saroj lived in fear of the murderous vampire until they came together and stabbed him with a hawthorn skate, killing him forever. And legend says that a butterfly escaped from Sava's grave, which meant that Sava is still visiting the mill to this day day. The citizens of the village tell many stories about the horror they have faced from this creature, and it's the most known horror story throughout all of Serbia. And in 1880, one of the most famous Serbian authors, Milovan Glisic, wrote the book 90 Year Later, rooting from the story of this famous vampire, and was in fact published 17 years before Bram Stoker's Dracula. 
And then in 1973, all of the stories of the vampire were turned into Serbia's first horror film, Butterfly. The old Sava mill was left abandoned for a long time until it was renovated by the local owner of the village, Cafeteria, and after all of these stories swirling, Sava has become a local legend, and tourists come from near and far to visit this mill. Many still believe that Sava to this day still haunts the mill, and it's considered one of the most haunted places in all of Serbia. Kicking off at number 5, Theatre de la Ville. Not gonna lie, this one is equal parts morale grossly charming and also completely terrifying. The Theatre de la Vie, meaning the City Theatre, was opened on the 30th of October and has a rich history of misfortune and tragedy. Until the fall of Napoleon III in 1870, it was known as the Imperial Theatre and showcased the dignitary of Paris in all their theatrical glory. One of the more tragic tales surrounding the theatre is the story of the French romantic poet and public eccentric Gérard de Nerval, who is best known for his sordid travel diaries and his strange habit of roaming the streets of Paris with his pet lobster in hand. Tragically, Nerval committed a grisly suicide in a particular shady corner of a nearby narrow street, and in death it is said that his spectre haunts the theatre. Spectators claim to have seen his form pop up on stage in a ghostly ploy to distract the actors. Apparently he's lost his lobster though. Next up at number 4, Parc Montsouris. Parc Montsouris is a picturesque picnic park in the heart of Paris, an otherwise perfect landscape for tourists and locals alike to enjoy on a hot summer's day. Open in 1863, Parc Montsouris is one of the largest green spaces in Paris, comprised of four others which were created by Napoleon III and his prefect of the Seine, Baron Haussmann. They were made to be enjoyed by the ever-growing Parisian population, and still are to this very day. Strange then that the grim history of a nearby paranormal hotspot is regularly avoided, blending both historical fact and local legend, the name of the park's only tomb, the Rue de la Tombe et Soie. Which hints at its most notorious legend, that is Isser de Montsouris, a brigand who terrorised Paris during the 9th century, looting and pillaging passing travellers of the green area. Eventually he was caught and his head was lopped clean off by William of Aquintaine. But it didn't stop his spirit from continuing his terrifying regime, being one of the most notorious spirits to have been sighted in modern day Paris, often appearing at the park's Palais du Bardot. It may sound like hocus pocus, but still, stranger still, it in 1911, the Palais was controversially sold to the government, but mysteriously it burnt down before any work could commence on it. The work of Montsouris? Well, probably. Number three on this list is Ochate. Ochate is actually an entire village, and it's said that the whole village is haunted. This village is abandoned now, and maybe a big reason for that is because of how haunted it is. Don Quixote says why this village started to empty at the end of the 19th century is still not entirely clear, but illness, unfortunate weather, and a murder all had a role to play. During this time, there was sickness, especially the Spanish flu, which devastated the area and rain and hail that destroyed crops in successive years during the 1920s caused people to go search for a better place to live. In 1930, there remained only two families, one being a family of three and the other a single elderly man. Because a crazy pastor that frequented the village threatened pretty much everyone, the Aranguiz family decided to move to a safer village nearby. The elderly man, Yusbeo, wasn't far behind. Their fears were later realized when the crazed shepherd brutally killed a fellow shepherd in one of the abandoned houses in Ochate in 1936. All of this has obviously left its mark on this abandoned village and now it's just a mess of ghostly and paranormal activity. A hotspot of spirits, demons, and beasts. In fact, and this is almost something else entirely, but there have been literal sightings of UFOs here before. That's a lot of stuff for one tiny village in Spain. I would recommend doing exactly how the locals did and avoiding this village at all costs. Number two on this list is the Thorax Hospital. The Thorax Hospital has definitely seen some horrible things over the years. The hospital, which is now abandoned and out of use, is located in Teresa. Back in its heyday, it was mainly used as a hospital for those sick with respiratory illnesses. All of the diseases varied, but if it had to do with your lungs, then it was likely that you ended up here. The hospital sadly boasted a very horrible statistic when it was operational. It seemed that an uncanny amount of individuals would take their own life if they got sent here. Many believe that due to the nature of the diseases that we're referring to, many people died a slow and painful death. This process often induced a sort of 
psychosis where the individuals would start to lose their mind a little bit before dying. Logical thought was very hard for these individuals to grasp, and even though it was a house of the sickly, it also turned into a house for the mad. This is why a lot of these individuals would take their own life. One of the biggest legends surrounding this spot is the jungle. Apparently, there is a garden in the middle of this hospital. Patients would go up to the ninth floor, and they would either be thrown off, or jump themselves to what was called the jungle down below, or the garden. Obviously, the nine-story fall was too much for their bodies to take, and they would die. That's why people believe this garden to be the most haunted of all the spots in this hospital. A very dark and somber place in Spain that shouldn't be gone to. And finally, number one on this list is the Malaga Tunnels. Malaga is a beautiful province in Spain by the water. It's a very popular tourist attraction spot that has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Underneath the fun in the sun, there are some deeply haunted tunnels though. Cycling Country writes, Tied to a grisly chapter in Malaga's history, when for 30 years a spate of young girls went missing in the area, some of their bodies were found near a river quite close to the Cortajo. Rumors soon abounded that underneath the building existed tunnels and torture chambers where these unfortunate women met their fate and with satanic rituals being performed. It also was a hospital and prison during the bloody civil war and quite possibly saw some executions and a lot of torment. The truth is, the tunnels did exist but have now been bricked up. The rest, well, you'll have to make up on your own mind whether this qualifies as one of the most haunted places in Spain. However, passing by this abandoned place sure is creepy. Disembodied voices, screams, lights, a sudden grip by a cold hand, and appearances in upstairs windows of people all add to the strangeness of this spot and have been witnessed by researchers in the paranormal fields. Unfortunately, this notoriety has caused a lot of damage due to thrill seekers trying to literally unearth the building's secrets. To add fire to these myths, in 2000, a film was made there using it as a backdrop. However, accidents, faulty sound, and battery problems plagued the production, and it was never finished. For me, this is definitely one of the most haunted places in Spain. We're talking about torture chambers, satanic rituals, murder. This is a horrible place that has seen way too many tragedies and horrors to be anything but a haunted location. If you go to Malaga, stick to the fun in the sun and stay away from the tunnels and this haunted building. Going down there may just be the last thing that you do. Number five on this list is the Hoher Market. Hoher Market is directly in the center of Vienna in Austria and is quite beautiful today. It has fancy supermarkets, boutique cafes, and high profile stores for people to window shop and explore. Therefore, it's definitely a solid tourist attraction, but it may not be the best spot to go visit after you hear some of the things that happened here in the past. This market for over 500 years was where the state sanctioned executions would take place. 500 years of people being killed off has resulted in thousands of deaths piling up over those said years. The manner to how these people were killed has changed and morphed over the years as well too. Most were hangings, but some were quarterings, which is a process where someone gets chopped up into tiny little pieces. Yeah, it's pretty graphic. Because of this, there have been many reports of hauntings in this market. Apparitions of people dressed in clothes dating back to the 14th century have shown themselves to people before. One report has someone detailing an instance that they turned a corner and swore they saw a dead corpse right in front of them. When they returned to the location with another person though, there was no sign of it at all. Other people have sworn that they've seen the ghost of an executioner here before, standing and waiting to hang someone. I honestly think that going to this market would be okay, but if I was to go, then I'd much rather go in the daytime. Probably not the spot you want to be walking around at nighttime with the ghosts of the execution. Number four on this list is Seitenstedtkes. Six. I hope I pronounced that right, but I kind of highly doubt it. Either way, this is a building in Vienna that you shouldn't want to stay in at all. It all started when a woman tried to murder her husband. Not the best way to start a story, but here we are. The woman who lived in this building tried to poison her husband, but on the same night she meant to do it, actually died herself. Now, her spirit still resides at this place and haunts the people who stay here. Visitors of this building say that they'll see this ghostly apparition sitting in a wooden rocking chair and swaying back and forth looking 
looking as eerie as ever. Apparently this wooden chair also emits electromagnetic rays. Why it does this or from where this legend came from is currently unknown. This woman also isn't alone in her haunting of this place either. She was said to have a very pretty white cat and this ghost kitty still sticks by her. The cat wanders the halls and can appear and disappear as it chooses. It's said that if someone looks at it, then mischief will find them and cause them major problems in their life. I should also note that this building isn't even that nice to begin with. Like at least the market, I could get a nice coffee or something, but best case scenario here is that I get bothered with rats, whereas the worst case scenario is I get murdered by some ghost woman. Not the spot that I recommend you stay at if you're heading to Vienna. Coming in at number three, the man in the black coat. And I just absolutely love this creepy tale because it reminds me of one of my favorite films of all time, Midnight in Paris. It's not scary in the slightest, but check it out if you haven't. Great film. Anyway, as the legend goes, on one particular warm evening in 1925, a man named Jean Romier was sat reading in the grounds of the Jardin du Luxembourg when a handsome man in a black coat approached him and after conversation, invited him to a private concert at his nearby home. Romier followed the man to his apartment on the Rue de Vergrade where he was treated to a delightful evening of classical music and poetry. After enjoying his night, Romier left and on his way home, he went to light a cigarette, but realized that he'd left his lighter back at the apartment. He ran back upstairs to the third floor and knocked on the door but to no response. He knocked and knocked when a nearby neighbour came out of their apartment, annoyed at all the banging, and told Romier that no one lived there. It had been abandoned for at least 20 years after the previous tenant, a talented musician, had tragically passed away. Since then, any local Parisian will tell you that if you linger late enough in the Jardin du Luxembourg, eventually a man in a black coat will invite you to his apartment for a private concert. Would you go? Me? Nah, I'm alright. Swinging in at number two, we have the Jardin des Tuliers, which, while having a beautiful sounding name, is actually the scene of an incredibly bloody past and dark dark history. In the 16th century, the feared and nefarious Queen of France, Catherine de' Medici, had many enemies, conspirators who'd like nothing more than to bludgeon her in her sleep and remove her from the throne. Because of this, she employed the brute strength and bloody tactics of her henchman, Jean the Skinner, who rounded up her enemies and set about on a campaign to murder them all. He did exactly that, and he was very effective at it. So effective that Queen Catherine herself started to grow paranoid of him, because he knew so many of her secrets secrets and political intrigues. Well, of course, she decided the only course of action was to execute Jean the Skinner outside her palace at Tuileries. Since then, the Red Man, also known as the Red Spectre, has been known to haunt the gardens in his blood red attire. Marie Antoinette is said to have seen him just before losing her head, and it's commonly known that Napoleon consulted him during his rise as emperor to predict the outcome of forthcoming battles. That's pretty useful. And finally, at our number one spot, Le Catacomb. Because after all, it can be no other. There's no denying that the creepiest, eeriest, most paranormal place in Paris is the endless catacomb caverns that wind their way through the streets below. The catacombs of Paris are a myriad of underground ossuaries that allegedly hold the remains of more than six million people, which were created in an effort to eliminate the city's overflowing cemeteries. Whether you believe the tales that surround this haunted place or not, there's no denying that the Paris catacombs are an undeniable effigy to the dead and long lost souls of the City of Lights. Although there have been terrifying tales of entire tour groups going missing, people driven to insanity after being lost in the long dark of its winding tunnels, it's much simpler to see the real haunting that the catacombs possess because the ghosts are in the very bones themselves, in the million memories that they represent, entire walls and tunnels built by the skeletal bones of the city's residents that have passed in and out of memory through a long, vibrant, rich, and often times bloody history. Paris has seen a lot in her time and the tunnels, well, they'll keep on going. Number five on this list is the Saz van Ghent Haunted House. As is customary on our top haunted places lists, pretty much every country has one home that's deeply haunted and this is Belgium's. Culture Trip says, near the Dutch border there was a haunted house so popular it attracted ghost hunters from all over Europe. Its fame became its downfall and the owner had it demolished for safety reasons in 2011. After all, old crumbled walls and moldy wood are a health hazard if downtrodden by enthusiastic photographers and are sure to annoy the locals. Besides safety reasons, the owner had his sights set on selling the property with or without the house. According to local legends, a German soldier was electrocuted near the house during World War I and his ghost remains in the home. He was joined by four Canadian soldiers during World War II. Their tank hit a mine on the property. There are several unsettling tales about the house. Cell phones suddenly had no service, watches stopped ticking, doors 
slammed shut and curious visitors captured strange mist on their cameras. Whatever the truth, we may never know. Since it was demolished, the haunted house of Saas van Ghent has turned into a legend. Now even though the house is no longer there, the ghosts are still said to be in the area. The land here is deeply haunted with our respect of World War One and World War II spirits. I find it really interesting that this home, or the ruins of it, aren't even haunted by a Belgian soldier at all, but literally by the ghosts of soldiers from different countries. I know that they died in unsettling and unnatural ways, and usually that's enough to leave a spiritual presence, but maybe the fact that it wasn't their home country added to this as well. Maybe it's harder to rest in peace when you're on foreign soil, when your family and loved ones are thousands of kilometers away. This is honestly just a theory that I was coming up with as I was writing this, so please comment down below if you think it might have some legs. Also, it should go without saying, but don't go visit this spot if you're ever in Belgium. Number four on this list is La Roche and Arden. We've already spoke about the haunted house. Well, another staple, especially for European countries, is the haunted castle. The castle La Roche and Arden is definitely one of Belgium's most haunted. Culture Trip writes, In the castle of La Roche and Arden, there used to live a nobleman with a very beautiful daughter named Berth. He figured the best way to get a son-in-law was to organize a tournament and give the winner Berth's hand in marriage. The story doesn't actually mention what Berth thought of all this. The Count of Montague participated fiercely, despite already being engaged to another woman, Countess Alix de Selm. He won every game, but near the end of the tournament, a mysterious small knight in black entered the contest. Said knight killed the Count and took Berth to the bridal chamber. The next morning, the couple were found dead on the cliffs underneath the bridal chamber's window. The mysterious knight turned out to be Countess Alix de Selm, who had made a pact with the devil so she could kill her cheating fiancé and his wife-to-be. Ever since then, the Countess ghost haunts the castle. Well, that story honestly screams Shakespeare play to me if I've ever heard one. We got drama, betrayal, murder, it literally has everything. And usually when it has all of those elements, a ghost is left behind to haunt what remains. This story is no different, and the residents of this castle since then, plus any visitors who have come here, are constantly terrorized by the ghost of this countess. Apparently she doesn't hide her presence at all, but makes herself very known. She'll attack visitors and has even been reported as possessing people. Most of the time, people make a full recovery from these possessions, but there have been reports where the trauma never goes away. Anyone who's willing to make a pact with the devil is certainly someone I want to stay away from, and being in ghost form makes that even worse. Number three on this list is Malavin Spitz Bubenhaus. Now that is super hard to say, so for the remainder of this entry, I'm going to refer to this as the Vienna Prison. This place was put out of commission a long time ago, several hundred years ago in fact. There is a new building there now, but it's still haunted with the same ghosts that riddled this prison several hundred years ago. The prison was known for something truly horrible. Torture. Apparently, presumed criminals would be taken into the basement of this prison and brutally tortured in this spot. This torture was so horrible though that those that were kept here would sometimes take their own life prior to this treatment. The souls of those that were tortured and the souls of those that killed themselves are the ones that haunt this place to this day. Blood-curdling screams have been heard throughout this entire building. People have also reported feeling attacked by spirits here, like they're ripping at their own soul and tearing them apart. Just because you destroyed the initial building that caused these atrocities to occur doesn't always mean that the ghosts of those that were hurt will automatically move on. This is exactly what happened here, and it's why you guys should never go. Number two on this list is Friedhof der Nemenlusen. This place is a cemetery, and it's been nicknamed the Cemetery of the Nameless. Amy Script details the history of this place beautifully by writing, Throughout the 1800s, the Danube River, which cuts through Austria, was often littered with bodies. These were usually drowning victims, those who had committed suicide, and often cause of death was unknown. Once the river had claimed these lives, it would carry the lifeless bodies of its victims ashore. Hence, dumping them in the same area. As even more bodies accumulated, respectful locals sought out solutions to offer them peace. The Cemetery of the Nameless was erected to offer these unidentified nameless people a place to rest, because they could not be interred at any of the Catholic cemeteries in Vienna. Probably as many of the victims were of suicide. Bodies were routinely collected and interred at the cemetery, sporting markers listing them as nameless people. Almost 500 people were interred at the original cemetery, which was eventually abandoned. Today, Today, a more modern and smaller segment of the cemetery continues to stand. This burial plot holds the remains of 104 people. Of those buried in the cemetery, 61 remain nameless, whereas others were identified by family or friends. Because of this dark history, this place has been labeled as one of the
of the most haunted cemeteries in the entire world. Disembodied voices coming from these nameless dead can be heard constantly throughout this cemetery. It's believed that the nameless can never truly rest until their identity is revealed. Their souls will never find peace until the world knows who they really were. Apparently, the former caretaker of the cemetery haunts this space as well, and he'll often appear to the visitors. Those that go here have felt like some sort of entity is also pulling at them. Not physically, but as if their souls are being pulled in multiple directions, as if somebody needs your help. This cemetery is definitely on the do not go list if you ever find yourself in Austria. And finally, number one on this list is Musham Castle. Musham Castle isn't just one of the most haunted spots in Austria or in Europe, it's right up there as being one of the most haunted spots in the world. Ghosts of soldiers, witch trials, werewolves, torturous owners, all of this has happened in the walls of this castle. Starting with the first thing on that list, ghosts of soldiers, there have apparently been over 45 battles that have taken place at this location. It's been said that the ground was soaked with blood during these fights and they were as gruesome as anything the world had seen to that point. Then moving on to the witch trials, this place has seen some witches die. In the late 1600s, tons of accused witches were killed here in gruesome ways. Those that weren't murdered had their hands chopped off or were burned with iron indicating to the world that they were criminals. The rumors of werewolves didn't start until the 1800s when animals started disappearing from around the area. Then their bodies would start showing up decapitated around the castle and had the locals living close to the castle believe in a deadly werewolf. Then there were also the rumors that came out about a vicious owner of this castle who would take people inside and torture them before killing them. This was proven when a torture chamber was found in the castle. Obviously, all of this has made the castle one of the most haunted spots in the world. People have said that they get the sensation of hands reaching out and grabbing them from thin air while they're at this castle. Some people have even gone mad after going to this place, saying that it feels like a parasite has entered into their brain. The werewolf has also never been found, and some of the locals believe that it still haunts this place to this day. This castle cannot be visited in any circumstance. It's certainly interesting to research, but visiting it is way too much of a risk.